Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, we'll begin. My name is Robin Harding. I'm the Tokyo Bureau Chief for the Financial Times, and it's my pleasure to moderate this press conference today. Uh, <laughs> I'll carry on, and I hope we'll get Professor Iwata back in a moment. We'll pause for a second. If you can hear us, Professor Iwata, we've just lost you from the screen, so we're just waiting to get you back. Okay, you're back. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce today uh, Kentaro Iwata, Professor of Infectious Diseases at Kobe University Hospital. Professor Iwata, one of Japan's most distinguished experts on infectious diseases. He's worked around the world with some of the, the biggest outbreaks of infectious disease, SARS, Ebola, etc. He caused a stir yesterday when he published a video on YouTube about his experiences on board the Diamond Princess cruise ship. Uh, we thank him for joining us today via Skype. In a moment, I will ask him to make some introductory remarks. But first, just a few housekeeping rules. First, the language of today's press conference is English. I will allow a few questions in Japanese at the end if we have time, but please, basically the language today is English. We're doing this via Skype, so we particularly need your cooperation to make sure this runs smoothly. We may have some technical problems during the uh, press conference. I hope you will bear with me. Please try to talk slowly and clearly so Professor Iwata can hear you properly. And if you have a follow-up, please signal to me, don't shout out. If we have several people talking at the same time, this will turn into chaos. Um, and with that, I would like to turn it over to you, Professor Iwata, um, yes. to make some introductory remarks, whatever you want. Thank you. OK, thank you for coming. and. Uh... As uh, introduced, my name is Kentaro Iwata uh, from Kobe University Hospital. The remarks I will make uh, from now at today's conference is all personal and not, does not represent the views of uh, Kobe University or other bodies where I belong to. Um, as you might know, that I posted a YouTube both in Japanese and English regarding the uh, Diamond Princess. Uh, basically speaking, the uh, principal opinion I wanted to express was a lack of adequate infection control inside the crew, cruise ship. Uh, two days later, this morning, uh, the opinion is largely the same. The uh, problem was fundamental, and that is probably based on the lack of more fundamental or systemic uh, issue, which is lack of CDC, which exists in most nations, but not in Japan. So that is uh, what I uh, expressed. And the, uh, if you want to ask me uh, some questions or uh, raise suggestions, I'm very happy to answer you. Okay, uh, we'll move to questions. Let me first just acknowledge Nico Nico Doga, who have provided the uh, facilities to allow us to run the video today. Um, I saw David McNeil's hand go up. David, do you want to go first? Uh, hi, Professor. Thanks for coming along. David McNeil for the, for the Economist. Mm -hmm. um, you, I think the first question has to be, you uh, took down your original video, or you appear to have taken it down, uh, would you care to explain the reasons why you did that? Uh, okay. This morning, I removed my uh, posts, uh, both English and Japanese version, um, and the, I completely removed all of them. It's because just the post became so viral and the, uh, viewed by so many people. And the, uh, yesterday, uh, I was informed that the uh, significant improvement was uh, done inside the cruise ship and the uh, zoning, which I had a huge concern, had an uh, improvement for the better uh, circumstances. Also, on the same day, yesterday, uh, Institute of Infectious Diseases in Japan uh, published 
the report uh, showing the data of the uh, cruise infections. And this is what I uh, suggested over last a week or so to uh, Ministry of Health and Labor, which is the uh, uh, openness and transparency and the disclosure of the data inside the cruise ship, which was never been done. The, um, the uh, news coverage showed the number of the people who got tested and who got the positive. And you could have seen, uh, you know, the uh, today's number of tests was 66, and out of 66, 44 turned positive kind of thing. Which doesn't mean anything to me, because the uh, the date of the testing and the date of the result came in it doesn't mean anything in regards to the uh, spread of the infectious diseases inside the cruise. So what you need is the onset of the symptom of each patient who developed the coronavirus infection and the date of that. If you see the uh, curve, which is called epi curve in a professional term, then you will distinguish between the infections occurring before February the 5th and after the February the 5th. And that is very extremely important because unless you know the fact how many secondary infection was occurring when and where, you can't really conduct a, a proper infection control management. So that was what I thought was lacking and the thankfully uh, Institute of Infectious Diseases uh, published that yesterday morning and it turned out the, uh, most of the Japanese passengers didn't have the secondary infection after February the 5th, although uh, there were uh, infections among crews which is likely to be a secondary transmitted. So the, because of these two, one with the improvement of the zoning inside the cruise ship, and second, the uh, disclosure of the data to show the uh, uh, about the uh, fact about the secondary transmissions, I thought my role of the YouTube post is over. Um, there's no need for um, spread the opinion and the, uh, ask for the uh, uh, to be aware of this issue because the issue is gone. And so the uh, I thought the uh, we don't need to uh, discuss any further regarding this, and uh, I removed the post. So that's my answer. Did I answer my question? Your question? Okay, another question, uh, gentleman opposite, David. Can you give your name and affiliation, sure. please. Thank you, doctor. My name is Nakano. I'm freelance. Yes. Uh, I have a question. Sure. Um, after posting your statement on YouTube, I mean, before you removed it, mm. have you felt any pressure from anyone like, like Dr. Takayama or mm. Gaku Hashimoto or other colleagues of yours? Uh, I don't know who's Dr. Hashimoto. Oh, I'm just, no, 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 uh, that's Gaku Hashimoto. Oh, um, unlike what he posted, I've never seen uh, Mr. Hashimoto, not inside the ship and not outside the ship. Honestly, I didn't even know whether the, the uh, politician named Mr. Takashi existed until yesterday afternoon. So the, uh, uh, let me uh, make it clear regarding this misunderstanding. Probably he saw somebody other than me. <laughs> Anyway, um, Dr. Takayama, uh, we had a number of communications back and forth over the telephones, over the uh, text messages, and uh, uh, many of them were very technical. So the, uh, I can't really go into the detail about this, but uh, I never felt any pressure from him uh, in terms of like, you know, you should do this, you should do that kind of thing. He asked me to remove the post two days ago, but uh, he never uh, had any pressure on it. Uh, as I said, I know I don't know Mr. Hashimoto personally, so I don't get anything from him. Okay, uh, Motoko. Thank you so much for speaking to us, Dr. Iwata-san. Have you changed your opinion? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm Motoko Rich with the New York Times. Yes. Um, yes. Yesterday you said that you had concerns about the passengers who were leaving the ship that they might um, mm -hmm. not, in fact, be mm -hmm. uh, virus-free despite testing negative. Have you changed yes. your opinion since then? Uh, well, largely, uh, I 
don't change my opinions as of now in many topics. One, the problem with the zoning. Second, the problem with the secondary transmissions. Although, after seeing the data of the Institute of Infectious Diseases yesterday, I think the risk of uh, passengers to have a secondary infections now would be tremendously reduced than what I feared before viewing that data. So I'm very glad to see that. But still, uh, because there were uh, crews who got most likely a secondary infections after February the 5th, that means there's still a room of uh, potential exposure of the virus from these crews who might be spreading the virus before the diagnosis is given. So the risk is reduced, but the risk exists. So I think uh, my opinion probably would not change. My opinion was a, uh, these people who were disembarked yesterday or maybe today should be monitored for next 14 days, possibly avoiding uh, uh, the contact with other people, maybe soft isolation kind of things at home, and be, be aware of the possible uh, onset of the disease later on. Uh, any other things you want to ask me regarding the change of opinion? Because the, I, I can't remember all of the uh, things I said. <laughs> um, no, we can move on to the next question, the gentleman here. Sure. My name is Kyle Cleveland. I'm with Temple University of Japan. Mm -hmm. um, you said that your views on this have changed somewhat from yesterday to, to today. And some of your comments yesterday seem to indicate a lack of trust and what the authorities were doing. Uh, you're mm -hmm. receiving a tremendous amount of pressure through social media and mm -hmm. other ways. Um, can you explain in more detail to the extent to which your thinking on this has changed and why? What do you mean by change? Well, you you're seem to have a more qualified response than you initially did um, in a very short period of time. So uh, are we properly understanding that your views on this have changed? Or not? I don't think I changed my views in a uh, uh, large perspective. Uh, the, for example, so the, the, the uh, I don't know whether I understand you correctly. So, which specifically do you want me to uh, comment on? I, I still don't get it. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. You had indicated earlier that you think some of the protective actions that are now being taken are uh, better than they might have indicated from what you initially saw. Uh, you mean the number of the secondary infection? No. no? Sorry. I think, if I'm understanding Kyle's question correctly, mm -hmm. I think we're wondering if you've changed your opinion about what you saw on board and your concerns about the lack of about infection control. About zoning and the secondary infection? Uh, no, I, I don't change my uh, uh, opinion in terms of the risk of the secondary transmission by the practice I saw two days ago, and uh, which was totally chaotic and which was totally uh, outrageous and the, which was completely bad in terms of the professional infection control measurement. Even uh, with the uh, uh, reservation of the, which is cruciate, not in the hospital, and uh, which the temporary measures, which is emerging situations, I, I could understand that lots of circumstances which might undermine uh, the uh, completeness of the infection control measures. But still, uh, you decided to keep more than 3,000 passengers and crews inside one very closed uh, box or cruise and keep for 14 days for uh, potential transmission to occur inside uh, while having uh, many infected people inside. So the uh, infection control measures have to be very, very thorough and very professional and very complete. And I didn't see any of these. And I don't change my mind uh, in terms of that. So the, uh, that's still, um, I, I think my view still holds. Okay, um, lady over there. Hi, uh, 
Hi, my name is Ariel Guzetto with the English side of Sankei Shimbun. Um, mm -hmm. You said that uh, you were told that the uh, conditions were improved. I was wondering mm -hmm. if you could elaborate. I imagine you can't say too much, but I was wondering if you could elaborate a bit more about what has improved and perhaps even who has told you this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say uh, who told me so, uh, but the, I could tell the significant improvement was given as the improvement of the clear alert zoning. And also, I became aware that the uh, number of the uh, infected people among passengers were declining uh, in terms of the AP curve. And so the uh, total risk on board uh, would have significantly changed since yesterday. Also, the, I was informed that the persons from Infect Institute of Infectious Diseases returned and uh, became dislodged as the uh, specialists. Uh, team, I think. So the a, a couple of things I thought was inadequate has changed yesterday. So that's uh, that is my understanding right now. Surya. Hi, Dr. Iwata. It's Hello. Surya from the Wall Street Journal. Nice to talk to you again. Um, mm -hmm. Just a couple of questions. You mentioned sure. that you looked at the data and um, you noticed that the Japanese passengers were not prone to secondary transmission, and perhaps the crew are. What about the others? What about all the other passengers on board? Uh, well, uh, according to my observation, up until two days ago, I think other people who were on board, such as DMAT persons, uh, the officials of the Ministry of Health and Labor, the quarantines, these people probably uh, place themselves at danger of uh, receiving a secondary transmissions because of the uh, infection control problems. And uh, it is still true right now. But the, because of the change uh, occurring yesterday, uh, the risk might have been uh, significantly decreased. Still, because of the incubation period, uh, you might see uh, the onset of the disease among those people from today and on, but uh, at least the no new infection occurring from today would not probably occur, I expect. Sorry, I just have one more question. Um, sure. Do you wish you had more support from the Japanese government for what you were trying to say? Yes. I always need the support from anybody. Thank you. Uh, let me ask a quick question. Sure. about the passengers who got off. Mm -hmm. uh, the US, Hong Kong, Australia, other countries are all saying that these passengers need to go into quarantine for another two yes. weeks. Mm -hmm. Do you think that should be done in Japan? And if not, why not? I, I think uh, people in Japan should follow the, what the people in US and Hong Kong and the Canada and the South Korea is doing, i.e. Uh, 14 more days of uh, isolation, but well, uh, it depends on the level of isolation, I would say, but uh, uh, you need to have some sort of monitoring for the next 14 days at least, and ideally uh, isolated, uh, uh, in an isolated environment, um, because of the uh, uh, risk of secondary transmission, I think it's real. And if you allow uh, secondary transmission to occur in a community, that would lead to the uh, tertiary transmissions and the spread of the disease. As you might see, the, uh, there are a number of the people who got infected with uh, this COVID uh, in Japan, but the, still the infections are really isolated and restricted to the certain areas such as Wakayama, Tokyo, and Hokkaido. And we don't see uh, infections in Kobe, we don't see infections in uh, Saga, we don't see infections in Aomori. So the uh, many uh, places in Japan are free of infections as far as we are aware of. So it's a time of the small cluster period where your aim is to contain the spread of the disease and the ideally eradicate it. In that sort of sense, you don't give up on allowing the new infection to occur in any circumstances. So the, some people might say, you know, Japan is full of infections now, so why do you care about the cruise ship? There's no point in 
uh, making an effort of the border uh, screening and uh, uh, closing. But I don't agree with that view because we still need to fight against this disease in uh, every effort and containing the spread of the disease. And once you allow the spread of the disease, then even if you were doing a good job up until now, then you will have to be you will have to return to the zero period again and do the same thing again and again. Uh, China is very aware of the risk of the re-spread of the infection from now on because the, they are returning to work and the, uh, that might allow the uh, uh, resurgence of the infection. We can't allow the same here in Japan. So your advice to passengers who have got off the ship yes. is that the responsible thing to do is to isolate yourself for the next two weeks. That's my suggestion. Uh, but on the, uh, on the other hand, we have to be very careful not to accuse these people who might develop a symptoms and potentially who might spread the disease to some others because the, they were just following what the government recommended. So the, uh, the respect for the privacy, respect for their uh, ID, and the uh, uh, kindness to these people who unfortunately could have infections later on is likewise very important, I think. Thank you. David, another mic there. Sorry, David Benil again. Um, yeah. Would you care to extrapolate from what you saw on the ship yesterday to yes. express any concerns you might have about the way that the disease is being, or the outbreak is being contained in Japan in general, around the country? Around the country? Uh, not in a cruise ship? Yes, aside from the cruise ship. Any concerns you have around Japan? Around Japan? Well, I had been saying before the cruise ship program, I had expressed my opinion of the Japan's government had been doing a fairly good job uh, up on the cruise ship. And they were really monitoring the disease, and they prepared the medical care, and the, uh, they prepared the, uh, um, uh, the laboratories, and the, uh, they uh, uh, followed the uh, sort of contact uh, tracing. And so the, uh, so far, I think Japan's doing a fairly good job uh, for almost everything, except for a cruise ship, and potentially a Wakayama epidemic. Uh, inside the hospital, which I have another big concern for now. So the, I think for this period, uh, Japan should continue the same thing uh, unless there is another phase of the infections occurring in some other areas. Could you elaborate on the Wakayama hospital? We have very few data on Wakayama Hospital, so I cannot make a big comment on Wakayama. But uh, uh, again, I, I would like to have more data on a daily basis. So the how many people got uh, traced and the, how the infections occurred and uh, who, how many were at risk and so on and so on. Then uh, also I'm very uh, interested in uh, healthcare personnel who got uh, close contact with the infected people, are they still working in the hospital or are they isolated? Uh, this concise information uh, I'd like to have and everybody should share with while keeping the uh, each person's privacy very secret. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Professor Awada. Rocky Smith from Reuters. So you yourself are in a kind of self-imposed isolation. Uh, could you describe to us in, in maybe a bit more detail about the precautions you're taking, uh, your daily life, as maybe a model for what you're recommending these passengers to do as they go into, as you say, soft isolation? Okay. First of all, I never recommend uh, what I'm doing right now to any of the passengers. Uh, well, you know... It's, yeah, at least yesterday, uh, I had to respond to the so many interviews uh, from morning to uh, midnight. So the uh, I, now I'm scared of developing a uh, disease other than coronavirus infection. Now uh, I'm putting myself on a self isolation because the again uh, I 
thought I stepped in the red zones while not protecting myself, i.e. Uh, PPE. Uh, that is the most dangerous thing to do as an infection prevention specialist. And I'm not scared of getting disease myself because I know that 80% of cases is just a common cold. And only the small minority people would get pneumonia and very few would die of this. But still, I'm very scared of uh, spreading this disease to others as the responsible doctor. I don't want my family to get the disease. Um, not to mention my patients. Uh, I'm not going to take care of my patients uh, from two weeks from the uh, the day I uh, left the ship. Uh, so this is my responsibility rather than for my health or safety. Um, but, you know, uh, I also I think I need to contemplate on the, what has been done over the uh, last two days and the, seek um, some sort of the improvement in the, uh, what I could do uh, from today. Um, that's also another thing I'm thinking of doing. So do you plan to stay in this same hotel room for the next two weeks? How do you plan oh, to eat? I can't tell that for sure <laughs> for now. And... Uh, uh, I'm not going to tell where I'm staying, and I'm not going to tell where I'm going to stay tomorrow. Uh, let me keep this as a secret to you. Okay, Motoko. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Iwata. Do. It's Motoko yes. once again. Uh, um, I wonder if you could expand on why you took the video down, because so much of what was in the video, you say you haven't changed your mind, and it seems like it's an important point that needs to be out there about infection control measures on that ship as more and more passengers disembark and as, as co other countries make decisions about what to do to, uh, with returning passengers. Okay, um, I removed my post because first of all, I, my intention as seen in the, the end of the video is to change what was happening inside the cruise ship. And the, my intention was not to criticize anybody personally. Uh, therefore, I never mentioned any person by name to criticize or accuse anybody. That was not my ma uh, intention. But the, a lot of people uh, misunderstood me saying that the, I am trying to accuse somebody personally or institutionally. That's not my intention. And leaving my posts on face, uh, the YouTube would allow a lot of people continue to misunderstand me and trying to uh, develop some fissure between the uh, me and the other bodies, which I have no intention to. I would like to be very friendly to everybody and I would like to be very rational. I would like to have the scientific discussions with anybody to improve the situation and make this problem better. That's my intention. Very unfortunately, I didn't have any chance to have a discussion with anybody inside the ship because I didn't have any allowance of speaking and removed from the ship. So the, uh, uh, that's my regret, the biggest regret. Uh, if I could have the time to talk, then I could have suggested the improvement, which I think is what's needed then. Uh, after posting the, to YouTube, thankfully, the, the zoning changed and the, uh, the structure of the infection prevention inside the cruise ship changed and uh, now we know the di transmission dynamic of uh, coronavirus infection inside the cruise, largely. So the, I think the role of the YouTube is over and the, to avoid further spread of the misunderstanding and the uh, unnecessary division of the views or the hostile uh, uh, exchange of the opinions. I just decided to remove everything. Motoko, is that okay? There's a question on the next table. My name is uh, Karin Nishimura from um, AFP. I have yes. two questions. 
Uh, the first one is, do you think that you play a role of whistleblower in this case? And the second question is about uh, the WHO, who, yes. who um, ask people not to overreact uh, because uh, uh, the, the spreading of the disease is uh, almost in China and uh, not so so uh, so much in other countries. Yes. Do you think that uh, in uh, any sense, uh, Japan, by uh, cancelling a lot of uh, um, uh, event, is overreacting to the? spread of the disease or not? Okay, uh, for the first question, I don't know whether I uh, play the role of the whistleblowers, but traditionally I think Japanese don't like whistleblowers of any kind. So the uh, I don't know whether I could have played a role, but things changed yesterday anyway. So I'm happy with the change. Whether that change will lead to the uh, improvement of the fundamental problems such as lack of CDC, I don't know. Uh, people could become rather adamant on what, uh, what they are, so the, uh, maybe the structure like CDC would be gone by now and in the future that I'm very sorry about, but we'll see. Uh, for the second question, uh, I agree with WHO that people should not overreact. Uh, as I said, the Japan's spread of the infectious disease is uh, rather limited to uh, several uh, places. I still have a big concern whether that small cluster of the diseases would lead to the large expansion of the infections, which could happen. My uh, intention of fighting against this disease has never changed since the beginning of this program, which is never produce a second Wuhan in Japan. If you produce the circumstances like Wuhan now, which is just a disaster, very bad disaster, and it is almost incontrollable uh, to anybody, you should avoid that. If you allow millions of people get infection with this virus, then thousands of people will die. There's no way to prevent the, uh, the infection to get severe. So the government says they, uh, you have to prevent the severe cases, but uh, because there's no way to block the cases to change from the light to severe, you, <coughs> excuse me, you have to prevent the case to occur if the number of the cases is small, the proportion of the people who get severe case would be small. But if you get tens of thousands of people got sick, then certain number of people will get a severe disease. <coughs> Excuse me. So the uh, so you have to be sort of you have to be uh, have totally different opposite views at the same time. You have to be very careful. But you have to be uh, calm all the time. At least in Japan, there's no need for the restricting any events or restricting a commuting, restricting a walking outside. I don't think there's any need for that as of now. Whether that will lead to the uh, finish of this disease epidemic, I don't know yet. And we have to be prepared. But so. See, we have to be extremely cautious, but uh, we shouldn't panic. That's my opinion. Okay. Do we have more questions? I can see a hand up over there. Okay. I read your stuff from Japan Times. Thank you for very much for talking to mm -hmm. us today. I have two questions. Sure. Uh, so, uh, uh, watching your video, I thought your key message is your concern about violation of protocol of mm -hmm. worker, uh, yes. how, how to use the protection gear. If you wear the protection gear in a clean zoning, any zoning would have meaning, right? So I yes. thought that was your key concern. So what about now? So what kind of, have you seen any improvement in, on, 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 about these issues or after seeing the data of the passenger yesterday? Or are you still concerned about this behavior of the people in the, in the ship? 
This is my first question. Second question, I think you have argued Japan needs something like a CDC. Yeah. So could you elaborate or, uh, more about your argument and uh, what shortcoming do you see in the current system in Japan? Thank you. Okay. So the for the improvement of the zoning and the infection prevention, because I, I had never been allowed to enter to the cruise after two days ago, I haven't seen myself what is happening now, but I was informed that the significant improvement about the zoning was done, and the, I'm very happy to hear that because uh, I didn't want to see far more infections among medical uh, care personnel, um, ministry officials, and uh, uh, crews and others. So the uh, that is my view. For CDC. Uh, so you need to have a concrete, separate, independent system among experts who can make a decision in responding to uh, these infectious disease epidemics. And this has to be professional. They need to have a authority. They need to have a autonomy. And they need to have a, a, a clear independence. Uh, there shouldn't be any... Uh, cross-cutting from anybody back in, from the backyard uh, because I've seen many things are decided behind the scene and we never know who decided and how it was decided and uh, what is happening inside and the who were discussing with whom and the, uh, the reason and rationale for each decision making everything is in a dark zone in Japan. So we never know what is happening and we never know why it happened. That's not a good scientific decision making. And if you avoid scientific decision making, that would lead to the wrong decision making all the time. Uh, that could be a sensational decision making, that could be an emotional decision making, that could be a political decision making. And this decision making is not very good in mitigating the real risk of infectious diseases, which should be dealt purely scientifically uh, to protect people's uh, life. Also, the scientific decision making is uh, good in regards to preventing a, uh, social problems, such as prejudice, discriminations, uh, which Japan suffered from a lot of uh, these social issues a, uh, in terms of the infectious diseases in our history, such as leprosy, HIV infections, and so on. Uh, we should avoid that. Uh, the the uh, leprosy patients were isolated because of the uh, wrong view of uh, uh, prejudice by seeing the people's face and the, they wanted to isolate the people. Scientifically speaking, leprosy is not contagious to anybody in normal life, so you shouldn't isolate these people. Therefore, scientific decision making is very important in protecting human rights and avoid these unnecessary discrimination. Uh, back to CDC talk. So the, uh, again, scientific decision making independent body and autonomy and authority is needed and the, uh, China has it, South Korea has it, because uh, East Asia tended to have the uh, have a tendency to decide things backwards, but people are beginning to change. Japan has never changed yet. Uh, I think we should. Thank you. Um, any more questions? Okay, there's a question on the far table. Uh, Dr. Iwata, thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm Maria Maguchi from AP. Yes. Um, I want to uh, kind of follow up on, on the pre previous question 
Um, uh, and I, I was wondering, what uh, do you think of um, of the problem that you saw on the ship um, originated from? Was it because of the bad examples of of, um, of a scientific decision making in in terms of the crisis management that was happening on the ship? And um, what do you think could be uh, used as a lesson? Uh, from what you saw on the ship okay. into the uh, other, uh, the rest of the... Uh, Thank you. Uh, I think the simple answer is the lack of CDC, as I said before. Uh, why the situation inside the cruise ship had an inadequate infection prevention? I think it's because of the lack of principle. So the infection prevention needs a principle and the principle will lead to the procedure, not the other way around. Uh, I, what I think is the people initially implemented uh, zoning, implemented the uh, infection prevention procedures, implemented the PPE, uh, so the, they did prepare a uh, infection prevention management. And I think they think, and they still think, they are doing a good job. To me, it was not good enough because there was an exchange of the dirty and clean. There was a confusion about the role of PPE. Uh, there were allowance of the crews potentially infected walking around. Again, remember the uh, I said, well, there were not many secondary infections, but the, actually there were secondary infections among the crews, mm -hmm. and which we shouldn't have a complacency about, you know, you, you can't say, well, that's a cruise, so, it, it, you know, it's, it's okay kind of things. You can't say that. So the uh, uh, number of the issues were based on the lack of principles, which is to distinguish between dirty and clean clearly, because virus is invisible. So unless you have a principle in dividing these clean and dirty scientifically, you can't have a... Uh, clear distinction between these two. I, I, even if you put many things on the manual, you know, this is the green zone, this is red zone, this is PPE, that could be violated very easily unless you have understanding of the uh, clean area and the dirty area. That was very clear in, for example, Africa when we were fighting against Ebola. But uh, it was not in Diamond Princess. And that's the very reason I got scared of getting infection myself. Uh, so the principle will never be given by the bureaucrats because they never had the infection prevention training, they don't have a experience, and the, uh, they don't have a system. So and CDC has should have all of these. Um, so this is how I feel. Okay, there was one more question. There's two more questions on this table, and then I will allow some in Japanese and your question as well, sir. No, we haven't moved to Japanese oh, sorry. questions yet. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, um, Karina Nishimura from AFP. Yeah, we just mm -hmm. learned from NHK that there has been two people uh, from the cruise ship who are uh, announced dead. Uh, mm -hmm. any, any kind of uh, reaction? Uh, compare... For example, comparing the number of deaths in uh, in China in China in China, sorry, and the number uh, in other countries, especially uh, in Japan, regarding the number of of positive cases, please. Uh, because of the total number of the people who got infected in Japan is relatively small, comparing to the one in China, because of the very small denominator. The small change in the uh, number of the people who are dead would hugely change the percentage. For example, if you had 100 people who got infected and you have a one dead, if it becomes three, that would become 3%. So the small change in the death case would significantly change the percentage. So it's too early to judge in Japan whether there was change in the mortality comparing to other nations, including China. I don't know the detail about uh, these cases uh, because uh, this is the first time I heard about. So the, I can't really comment on the specific in that point uh, regards. 
Um, okay, Surya. Dr. Yuvata, Surya again from the Wall Street Journal. Um, just a quick question. You talked sure. about crew. You've, you know, you talked about your observations about the personnel on board. You talked about how some of the Japanese passengers did not look like they'd had secondary transmission or that they weren't infected from the secondary transmission. What were your observations about the other passengers having read the report that you've just read? As a passenger? Yes. Uh, the, in terms of transmission? Yes. Well, the... Uh, well, I don't know. And shortly, so the, we have uh, hundreds of asymptomatic people who the onset is never known. We will never know the exact onset of these uh, people who got uh, detection reinfections asymptomatically. Uh, so we don't know about that. And the, we don't know much about the uh, about more than 100 people who have no data regarding the onset of the symptoms. So we have a, several things we still don't know. Also, we don't know whether or not they will develop a disease from today and on. So I can't say from the t report, report of the Institute of Infectious Diseases yesterday was very reassuring, but uh, as they themselves admitted, that didn't answer all the questions and concerns with what we have right now. Okay, could those who want to ask questions now clearly, clearly raise their hands, please, so I can see where the questions are. So I see three here on these tables, four. Okay, we'll go around this way. So you go next. Okay. Uh, hi, Dr. Riwata. It's Dennis Normile of Science Magazine. Thank you. Thank you for your time on the phone yesterday. Your video mm -hmm. appeared uh, late in the evening on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And on Wednesday, mm -hmm. the National Institute of Infectious Diseases posted this information mm -hmm. on its website. Do you think the appearance of your vi video mm -hmm. pressured the National Institute of Infectious Diseases to release this data? I think so. I, I, but uh, I don't think they will say so either. <laughs> Okay, um, the gentleman down the table, you pass the microphone down, please. Hello, uh, my name is Shogo Takaji, uh, belongs to Manichi newspapers. Uh, I'm not good at English, so uh, I ask my uh, question uh, firstly in Japanese and say it in English. O okay? Hi, uh, Arya Buzeti oh. from Sankei Shimbun again, um, uh -huh. the English side. Uh, I just have a question on uh, moving to the issue of quarantine in general. Um, uh -huh. I'm just interested, uh, if I understand correctly, you say that you're not against quarantine, but you say that the way that it was done was uh -huh. incorrect. Is that uh, my understanding is correct? Then the second right. thing that I would like to ask is, uh, could you, you said that you, you know, um, you saw, you had experience with like Ebola in Africa and so uh -huh. on. I was wondering if you could give a bit more detail on the kind of standard that you saw and what you were therefore expecting to see uh -huh. on the ship, apart uh -huh. from the green zone and red zone thing, which you mentioned before and thirdly okay. I was wondering whether you are have a uh, plans in the future to work together with uh, you know collaborate with your contact at the, for example in the government or do you have any plans to try to help with this crisis at all okay uh, for the quarantine uh, yeah I agree with you the, the uh, I don't I am not against quarantine but uh, I'm not saying you should quarantine people either the decision making inside the cruise ship is extremely difficult. So the if I were in charge of this case, probably I had to think thoroughly what to do on February the fifth when the uh, person were identified to be infected. Cruise ship is really a difficult place to protect people. So uh, it's a structural problem. So the, we have to decide whether to uh, release people outside the cruise or to keep a, uh, inside the cruise. The former uh, would cause a lot of people in the city to have a secondary infection, so that has a shortcoming. But keeping people inside the cruise ship could allow 
people inside the cruise ship to, to have a spread, a, um, spread of the infections further. So either scenario has the shortcomings, and the, the decision making can be very, very difficult. However, if you decided to keep people inside the cruise ship and isolate and put on the quarantine for 14 days, that has to be very, very thorough and has to be very complete because if you allow the secondary infection to occur, then that would become a zero, day zero again and has to isolate the people for another 14 days. That could be very painful to everybody. And the, to reassure the uh, procedure of the 14 days quarantine, you have to keep the data updated every day and monitor it and make sure there's no secondary transmission every day. And that was not uh, people uh, in charge doing, and I criticized for it. Thankfully, the data came out yesterday, so that was good. But you, in looking back, it should have been done every day uh, just by updating data since February 5th. So the things were uh, done in terms of the epidemiological data management. Uh, I think it was not completely proper. Uh, what about the other questions? I'm sorry. About your experience? Uh, oh, yes. Ebola. And, so, so the, uh, I, I was a family physician in uh, Beijing, China, and the, uh, seeing uh, several people who could potentially have a SARS case. And the, uh, also, I was the infection prevention specialist uh, working for WHO when I was in Sierra Leone. Uh, again, the, I did a lot of works, but the, uh, again, you have to have a clear distinction between where the virus could potentially be and where the virus doesn't exist inside the uh, facilities. That could be a hospital, that could be a tent, that could be a ship, and that could be a cars, uh, because the ambulance needs this kind of distinction too. Uh, so the, a lot of uh, application of this principle exists. So the, some people might say this is a big cruise ship, so the uh, infection prevention management inside the hospital doesn't apply to the cruise ship. That is technically true, but the principle is the same. Principle is to divide between dirty and clean. And you have to follow that principle and you have to modify your techniques and apply that to the everywhere you go to protect people, including the healthcare personnel. And the, uh, for example, in Africa, in Ebola, people, most people were uh, uh, treated inside the tent uh, developed by UNICEF and other bodies. But that tent was completely defined as a red zone, and uh, people were not allowed to enter into that red zone without wearing a PPE. And upon being being out of that red zone, then you have to remove PPE very correctly with two people by somebody watching, monitoring, and it has to go out without PPE as a green zone. And keeping that procedure accurately would prevent uh, further transmission to occur, particularly among the healthcare personnel. Uh, Green-red distinction is very useful in protecting healthcare personnel and the others entering to the red zone. It's nothing to do with the secondary transmission among passengers and crews. So this has to be clear. Okay, one more question from AFP, and then we'll have some questions in Japanese. Yes, uh, the last question is to confirm your uh, opinion on the possibility that a negative test uh, mm -hmm. turned positive uh, uh, a week ago or some days ago. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, some days later, sorry. Oh, uh, someone, so yeah, uh, I mean someone who has, who has been tested negative. Yes. If you do another test one week ago, is there yeah. a risk that this test is positive? Yeah. There's always the wrongness of the test. That could be technically wrong and that could be essentially wrong. And the, uh, there's no test which is 100% accurate and 100% sensitive. So that could be falsely negative. And we have to be aware of that potential danger of that. So the test negative is not a no infection. We have to know it. And the, therefore, we have to utilize the test result wisely. Excuse me. To interpret the result very 
accurately. Otherwise, we might release people who might have infections. So that's very important. <coughs> that may have happened because, for example, people who leave the uh, boat yesterday, yeah. some have been, has been tested on 12. So yes. it means one week ago. Yeah, but to me, it doesn't matter because I, I don't care about the test result anyway, to begin with. You might have a test negative because while being infected. Also, you might have a new infect, new infections two days later. So you could have a lot of scenarios you could consider. But still, as far as you remain being wise enough to know the test negative is not a no infection, you, your decision is easy. You have to keep a watching of this person for next 14 days, regardless of the test result, regardless of the date of the test. That doesn't matter at all. OK. Um, the gentleman from Mainichi, please, you can ask in Japanese now. ありがとうございます。日本語で質問させていただきます。はい。えっと、今の質問の関連になると思いますが、え、昨日岩田先生は、え、立憲民主党のヒアリングで、その、え、新型コロナウイルスの検査の感度はえ、ほぼ教えてください。あの、今はその日本政府はとにかくえ、テストプラスが感染者であるという定義をしていますので、あの、え、そうでない人がいない、外国人者とかいないわけですが、あの、どういう意味でそういうことをおっしゃっているのかを教えてください。は
なんと言いますかね、あの驚きがあるかというと驚きはあのない、そういう可能性を十分想像されたと思います。His question was regarding a two mortality occurred and broadcasted by NHK this morning regarding a two persons uh, in the 80s uh, died of、uh, COVID infection、uh, and who were a passenger of this cruise ship. And my, then he, he wanted my comment on this, and I said, Well,、uh, I, I don't have any specific comments right now because I don't know any detail about these cases. But the, because、uh, cruise ships do possess a lot of elderly passengers, and、uh, many of them do have chronic diseases on medications. So the, uh, uh, whether I was surprised by this news or not, my answer is no.、Uh, there's no surprise in seeing a, a death case、uh, because. Uh, they, are at,、uh, they are the high risk patients. We don't have a specific treatment proven to be effective against this disease. And the, so the, it is possible to have、uh, unfortunate mortality among many cases who got in this infection. Thank you. Second, the same thing is that the same thing is that the same thing is that the same thing is 感染力のことについてなんですが、はい、あの中国で新たなガイドラインが発表されましたけれども、はい、この中でそのエアゾル感染が起きる可能性があると指摘されております。はいはい、でこれを受けてですねあの東北医科薬科大学の各特任教授がですね、はい、エアゾル感染は、まあ、電車やオフィスなどの通常の生活関係空間で起きるものではないとおっしゃってるんですが、はい、あの例えばですね<笑>あの今日もその暖房の効いた満員電車であの激しく咳き込んでいる人がまあ出勤している光景を目の当たりに私しました。あの先生の,あの16日に書かれたブログのですねちょっと具体例をあの見た感じなんですけど今回の,そのウイルスの感染力というのはあの SARS、MERS と比較して先生はどうお考えていらっしゃいますでしょうかちょっと質問が若干どちらかというように見えるんですけど。えええっとえっと、エアロゾルについて話せばいいですかそうですね、まず一つそれをお願いしますあ、えっと。あと感染力、全体的な感染力の話で。あのエアロゾルは咳では起きません、えー。エアロゾルは空気感染ではありません。で、各先生がおっしゃるように、エアロゾルは、えー、と特殊な環境下でたまに一過性に起きるもので、めったに起きません。また中国のガイドラインは、エアロゾル感染が起こりうるとは書いてると思いますけど、起こったことが確認されたとは言ってないと。His question about the, was about the potential aerosol transmission of the disease, and it is widely broadcasted and put on the Chinese guideline. Aerosol, and he was concerned about getting a disease by aerosol, for example, inside a, a packed、uh, train in Japan. That doesn't happen because the coughing will never produce aerosol. Aerosol is, is totally different concept. Which is produced by very rare, unusual situations like a、uh, uh, virus infection with vomiting that, would, that was scattered on their、uh, floors and with this, some sort of the accident that would develop、uh, uh, aerosol kind of things, which rarely happens or it may never happen. So,、uh, you don't have to worry about the aerosol infections inside the train or the、uh, bus or the, on the、uh, road. That is very unlikely to occur.、Um, second, the second, second, second question was the comparison of transmissibility of、uh, COVID and SARS and MERS.、Uh, COVID is very funny virus.、Uh, COVID, I'm sorry, coronavirus is very、uh, peculiar virus. And the, The transmissibility of disease depends on,、uh, not solely depends on the viral characteristics, but also depends on the human nature, like whether you wear a mask or not, you walk around or not, and you were with other, other people or not. Society is also、uh, one of the determinants, whether you have a lot of traffic s y s t e m whether you have a huge population. s Whether you have a, a small housing, s whatever, whatever. So, the, we often mention basic reproductive number, the number of the people newly infected from one person. That is not a scientific, I mean, that's scientific number, but that's not a biological number. It's not just a biology, but the social life, human behavior, a lot of things could affect the, the R0 or basic reproductive number. 
so the, the basic reproductive number in China may not apply to the situation in Japan, for example. Um, I don't know whether the, the uh, probably coronavirus infection is, I think, more transmissible to comparing to SARS and MERS because uh, this produces much milder disease. So you can walk around. SARS was very severe disease, so you couldn't walk around. MERS, likewise. So the, the viral characteristics of developing mild symptoms for the next five to seven days, which is a very peculiar characteristic of this virus infection, would allow people to uh, not mind, be mindful about the symptoms and the, not be aware of the problem and the, uh, may continue to commute and go to school and stuff like that. That's why Japan's government specifically cautioned the development of urinary, uh, I'm sorry, upper respiratory tract infection. So the, even if the symptoms could be mild, you have to keep yourself at home. You have to give up the typical Japanese mentality of working hard even if you are sick. That should go. You have to be at home. You have to be wise. Maybe you can work with your cell phone or computer at home. So the, we have to change. Uh, so the uh, shortly, the, I think coronavirus infection, for many reasons, is more transmissible than SARS and MERS. Okay, we're basically out of time, and the questions are no longer about the Diamond Princess. Um, I will allow one more question, if it is about the Diamond Princess, uh, from the Japanese media. Yes, sir, on that far table there. すみません。NHKの安土と申します。あの、線内のゾーニングがあの改善されたということなんですけれども、あの、ま、これあのそうお感じになる根拠をすみませんちょっと改めてお聞かせいただけますでしょうか日本語で。聞いた。これはあのえ